Okay, it's about 15 after 6, and we're getting ready to head out. It started raining at, I don't know, 7.30, and it uh, went from light to harder, and finally just to dripping from trees by about 4 this morning. So uh, the tent required a complete chamois wipe down, trying to get most of the water off. I wrung it out four or five times, just, I mean, just stream and water when I wrung it out. So uh, the tent was wet. Uh, most of everything inside stayed dry. The toe box of the sleeping bag got a little wet. Um, so it'll be interesting because today is more muddy ATV tracks and now they're going to be even more muddy. I'm also anxious, uh, not really anxious, but curious, uh, once we uh, leave camp here to walk back by that waterfall and see if it increased any overnight because of the rain. It uh, got down to... I don't know, about uh, 58 is all last night. It was uh, pretty warm, uh, probably due to the cloud cover and the rain. So hopefully we can find some point today to lay things out and dry them out. Uh, I've got 24 and a half miles to the 49er truck stop. Don't really intend on making it there today, but sometime tomorrow, uh, maybe get some food, but at least you know pick up some snacks or whatever and uh, continue our walk. Uh, we'll see where it leads us. Yeah, I don't know if you remember yesterday, but it was just a single little trickle and now it's really flowing over. So that means the creeks are up. Might have be a wet shoe day. And poncho on. It's raining again. So I got down to Raccoon Creek and it had a choice whether to follow the turtle blazes or follow the far out application Red line. A comment said that the turtle blazes were muddier. I went and checked it, and yeah, every step you took, you slipped. And that wasn't even around the giant mud puddles the ATVs had created. So, backtracked a little bit, came out to the far out red line, which is on this road. It just means you have to cross the creek again. I crossed the creek the first time with dry feet. Amazingly, I didn't expect it. So, hopefully we get that lucky the second time. But, this looks like, despite the mud puddles you see in the road here, this is a much drier route than the other way. After raining all night siding. Just down the hill from me here is the creek. And it's got a fair amount of water in it. As I walked by, I spooked something big that... Uh, made significant sounds trying to get out of the creek and away from me. Well, that was some good training. I was walking in the dark with a headlamp and a poncho on in a driving rainstorm, navigating mud and mid-calf creek crossings and uh, trying to stay on trail in uh, this maze of ATV tracks. And we're just slow and deliberate. We made it. Hopefully the skies will clear off. I really got a good window of time getting out of camp and getting packed up before the second wave of big rain hit. So, all right, we will carry on. Okay, this has been my trail, right along the creek. I've had a couple light spells, some steady spells, and about three torrential downpours. Everything is wet, and navigating mud and slipping around. Oh boy! Well, it went to just dripping off the trees for a minute. So we will hope it stays that way. Man, a lot of rain, a lot of water. And we'll need to stop for a snack soon. Okay, another stream crossing. And I see a log over there to sit on and get some water.
It's almost up to my knees. So glad to be off of that muddy ATV track. Oh, looks like a big turtle head. It looks like we're back on actual road. Maybe my feet can dry out now. Great rest spot right by the side of the road. Nice big rock. And back in here, there's some dripping water. I drank some of it, it's excellent. Hey, it's not raining. All right, and I'm on a, an actual road, so I'm not trying to pick my way through and around mud. This is fabulous. <clears throat> well, we'll see how long this lasts. Just had some lunch and uh, picked up some water at that little dripping spring. Really tasty. And uh, I could tell that I needed the food. Um, it was really hard to stop while it was pouring rain, so I hadn't had anything for a while. All right, well, we're going to see how many miles we can get today to set ourselves up for um, getting to the 49er truck stop probably tomorrow morning, maybe at breakfast food. That'd be great. Well, just had to deal with another really aggressive dog came right down to the end of my hiking poles and was trying to bite him. I mean, he was, he wanted a piece of me. I just kept backing up slowly and fending him off until we got past the property line and then he seemed to be okay, but man, he wasn't messing around. So a lot of these uh, rural Kentucky houses believe in having an aggressive dog that, uh, goes right down to any pedestrian and gives them what for or worse. Nice bridge. Now that we got a little sun and breeze, I'm trying to dry some things out here by the edge of the highway on the guardrail. It's working pretty well for this. Hopefully about half an hour and everything will be pretty dry. Okay, turtles leaving the road and back into the woods. Rock formations just keep going. And this overhang is spectacular. Very cool. Yep, it's raining again.
We've been a very long time on this ATV road trying to dodge puddles. Good fun it is. Anyway, should be under a mile to Wildcat Mountain. And we'll see what it looks like there. If it looks like we can camp, okay, otherwise we gotta go a couple more miles down the mountain to a creek. So we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna check out this Robinson Spring. If it's good enough, we'll get water and then look for a camp. So on this spring, there's a little seep, a drip in the back, and it flows forward into these two potholes where water can be collected and then it flows down the hill. But it's pretty cool to be thinking you're drinking out of the same spring that Civil War soldiers have drank out of. The Battle of Wildcat Mountain. And I guess this also is where they got water for the, the Wildcat School as well. It was up here. Okay, well now that we got water <clears throat> for the night, uh, we just gotta find a campsite. And then tonight ought to be a pretty relaxed evening and relaxed morning. We'll get into the 49er truck stop in the morning. And uh, get some hot food. It's seven o'clock and the Serenity shuttle has landed trail mile 174.5 for a 22 mile day. I did not intend to do that, but as I came up over Wildcat Mountain and the Civil War battle site and down the other side, there, there haven't been any campsites, no place to pitch a tent. So I was beginning to despair, uh, but as I crossed the railroad tracks and turned the corner, here's a giant uh, Confederate Army reenactment. And I just decided it do not hurt to ask. So I went up and asked him and said, Would, I know you probably have a modern tent area because I used to do reenactment. Um, could I pay you to pitch my tent there tonight? I haven't found a campsite in 18 miles. And they were, they just were gushing generous and full of hospitality. They invited me to come down to their little bar later and have a beer. I'll think about it, but I'm pretty tired. And, uh, but in the morning they're going to be cooking up biscuits and gravy and all kinds of good stuff. So I might join them for breakfast for sure. Um, so just when you think you're out of luck, the trail provides in the most astounding ways. So we started the day in a torrential downpour after packing up a wet tent. Um, miles and miles and miles of muddy, ruddy ATV roads. Uh, in a pouring, in a downpour, uh, the poncho got tested and then finally got out of that and sat by the side of the road and dried things out and climbed Wildcat Mountain. Um, I had one unpleasant dog incident um, and, uh, and ended up here. Quite an adventure for the day, so thanks for sauntering with me and remember, we're doing the impossible that makes us mighty.